Thank you for joining XR Home, India's first AR VR focus podcast. And today I'm delighted and honored to have with me Mr. Kuldeep Singh, who's the head of AR VR practice at ThoughtWorks. Kuldeep is also a blogger. and the author of the new book titled Exploring the Metaverse Redefining Reality in the Digital Age Kuldeep has been already featured on Xarom earlier i think around 2020 i'm going to share the link for those users who would want to kind of get into the earlier episode and we actually caught each other just maybe last week at the or xr singapore so or, or xr singapore i mean i mean I, i think kuldeep will be great if we can start from there because i thought it was a fantastic event and i guess we need more of these events to keep on push driving the conversation of aar you know because i think you know from the time where oculus was acquired by facebook uh, and, and then facebook rebranded to uh, meta there was lots of hype but right now i think the last couple of years i mean you know the hype cycles is down but the excitement excitement amongst the ones who are vested in the field the developers the entrepreneurs the creators of uh, ar vr it, it was really rocking to witness i mean you know uh, at the uh, xr singapore so it will be great if you could get your thoughts on uh, what you felt about our uh, xr singapore what were the new things or the learnings that you learned which you think you can share with uh, the audience about ar vr uh, mr yeah uh thanks andy for inviting me on this uh another podcast and it was really great to meet you in person at singapore and seeing how and and be part of uh uh the wonderful panel discussion you you moderated definitely uh, the event on uh, the oasi is is a great event from diff- from a uh, perspective it was really a, um i can see lot of um, interest group joined there for example meta meta have their own uh, shown their bigger path niantic shown that how they want to map the whole world which is a which is not just a google map from a pokemon go uh, playing on the street to really mapping the whole spatial awareness of the whole world is a, is a big thing you, we can think of how many number of use cases would come on such a map where the world is already mapped we can we can see teleport people from one place to other place uh, it, it's it's a use and then getting first time experience of the smart gloves or um, um, or the ring smart ring and even contact lenses the this is where the xr is is coming and and you rightly pointed how uh, this name metaverse started and the meta changed their uh, facebook changed their name to meta and then there are other lot of uh, social media controversies and people raise their eyebrows when they hear the name of metaverse or xr tech uh, is such because largely what i felt is metaverse is most mid- misunderstood term in industry it is being defined or understood the way it shoots to people or entities or organizations so that's where that's where uh, i end up writing book while explaining people what exactly metaverse is what are the use cases what are the concerns but people really do not get into the use cases and concern, concerns that stuck with the term metaverse and they even um uh, forget getting into the into that depth right. that's where the book i bring the book on the on the make it reality that this is how the metaverse is those really made yeah thank you for kind of you know i mean sharing your insights yes so many awesome things and i guess you know we just laying down the foundation i think in the next few years like you said you know niantic mapping the entire world you know the kind of use cases that can come out of that is just you know you can't even like completely fathom you know so i guess we are all getting into a world which is completely going to be digitized and the and the uh the utilities that's going to open up it is going to affect all uh, industries you know from the education to the healthcare to the enterprise to the finance uh, to the retail so exciting exciting space and you rightly rightfully pointed out i i guess uh 
from virtual reality, you know, we went into augmented reality, mixed reality, then extended reality, then metaverse, then spatial computing. I guess these are basically narratives or terms which is convenient for those large companies who use these terms to kind of, you know, push their narrative forward. But I think in the end, I think it, it, it's all going to merge. You know, maybe there's going to be like a single glasses, which already we've seen the glimpse, you know, so it won't be called either or AR, VR, MR or whatever. It's just going to be like a technology because I, I, I don't think we call the uh, the computer in a pocket, the phone, a technology anymore because it's it's become ubiquitous. And I'm, I'm seeing the first signs of this technology, these immersive technology stack, uh, you know, going on, on onto the path where it's gonna like blend into our lives you know whether it's you know the consumers or uh, it's the enterprise so i think like fantastic uh time and i hope that i think uh the consumers as well as the enterprise you know kind of dig in like you said i mean go into the depth and understand what these technology is and so you know learn from it and how you can use it to uh, uh you know find savings or enterprise and also the consumers, you know, learn this new technology because this is the future. If you learn this new technology, you'll be able to create a, a great future for you. About the book, Meta Exploring the Metaverse, what nudged you to write this book and take us through the process of, uh, you know, like writing a book, authoring a book to the distribution? I've been writing about the technology from, from long and then... And creating courses around AR, VR and stuff. But whenever the term metaverse come, I felt people were all talking about, yeah, it's a gaming thing, uh, some VR or some virtual world. But when I was looking at doing more research and looking at definitions on the real world metaverse, like Niantic, what Niantic is picking is a real world metaverse. And then there are multiple versions of enterprise metaverse or a consumer metaverse and this and that. Or is it a collaboration platform? Is it a really a gaming thing? Or, or is it just a virtual environment? So all these uh, questions triggered me to write a structural definition and have a structural use cases. What all use cases are there? And then uh, being part of a uh, responsible technology group, I was also concerned about its uses. When people are using any technology, no matter it's a metaverse tech, uh, without really knowing its consequences, it really, uh, it really uh, it takes us to any direction. So that's where the concerns of it, I, I researched on it. And while building many solutions in these technology, uh, we build a lot of practices, how really such solutions are built, how engineering solutions to be done. So, so there was a good content getting created and that made me to, okay, it is, it looks like a book. And then um, thanks to BPB publication, they reached out to me and on similar topic, they wanted to, wanted me to write on this. And then I already had something in mind. Then we started defining table of content. It, it went into multiple cycles of review and we settle at one table of content and five parts of the book talking about very comprehensively all aspects of it till what should be the next path for it. So that's how the book came in. And uh, then multiple reviewers, technical reviewers supported it. And, um, and multiple people provided forward forwards for it. So that's how with support of all of the inputs, I'm able to get this out. Right, right. So congratulations to the book. I mean, you know, I I think it's a much needed uh, book for the Indian market specifically to kind of understand and go through, you know, maybe find out like the challenges and the opportunities before you kind of uh, get into this technology. Will you be able to kind of give a little bit more insight or maybe like a more synopsis or overview on, on the book? Like for, if people are kind of buying it, what more can you expect uh, from the book? Yeah, so the book is very precisely defined what exactly Metaverse is. It would not go into the hype definition provided by some entities and organizations. And it will give you a clear, it will cover around 20, 25 myths around Metaverse. And what are the reality about it? Is it really a fad? It is really dying? 
or it is a it's a thing that will remain forever with evolving nature of it while loosely defined metaverse is a thing which is okay and and then how the evolution of whole technology components like ai blockchain cloud infrastructure the network speed 5g 6g um, and iot for example and of course xr ar vr how all these things are linked to metaverse uh, web3 for example people are thinking web3 is only blockchain whenever the because these are this is how the definitions are very much um, interpreted or defined by entities but i try to define it very um, uh, relative definition to metaverse why metaverse how metaverse is linked to blockchain and how it is not so so that's where where exactly we need decentralized ecosystem and then this book get into the use cases from starting from gaming and entertainment healthcare sports and fitness um uh, how the education segment is going to change how hospitality and um, um and and medical science education would going to change for example museums tourism all these use cases there are 100 plus use cases in it and it talks about for example enterprise metaverse how enterprise would really uh, get benefit of metaverse technologies and not just that the mining uh, security forces how they can be they can get advantage of it so there are number of use cases and then there is a dedicated part in the book talking about the concerns of um uh, metaverse um how our identities and our social persona would be at risk with these technologies and how what all thing industry need to take care uh, how the sustainability aspect and the responsible adoption is a is a immediate need of attention while using this technology in this metaverse technology we are talking about not just exposing our videos stream we are talking about exposing the whole environment behind me what type of environment i am in what brand of the air conditioner i am using you will know all this information just by in metaverse environment so we need to see how all these things are uh, protected and then despite all this concern not using metaverse would not be an option eventually we would we end up using it so i tried to define what all types of applications what all types of uh, solutions uh, metaverse ecosystem has what are the uh, operating systems devices needed for the future stage of metaverse how the devices need to evolve the modularizations open ecosystem accessibility all these things uh, and practices around all these things software engineering practices product definition practice practices how metaverse uh, pro products will be tested how they will be uh, how user experience research would be done for them all these things are part of there are parts in the book and then the book eventually define the next uh, the the next step how what is the next um, path forward in the metaverse despite all the challenges there are huge cases and all these things so that's where i defined a call to action for academia for industry for government for people to come together and build it uh, it's not a responsibility of just one entity or right. individuals it is a, it is a collective responsibility True. So that's how the book flows, uh, but I'm sure uh, it is it is more than that because explaining it, yeah. Thank you for explaining, Kuldeep. So what? Obviously, I'm going to give the link down below so those people, I mean, you know, can you know go through the book. I mean, you know, purchase them uh, and, and go through it and understand and then learn, take those information and build what a better business or or use it in their own. Uh, uh, if they if they are users you know so yes you, you spoke about the use cases as well as the concerns you know and and yes i i think i've always seen that and i mean people are demanding that oh, or, or or wanting these tech stack to accelerate soon so i've always been cognizant about the rate at which these tech stack is evolving because i think we need to be let it slowly evolve because these tech stack are so potential 
that if if we if we are over expecting out of it too fast it can go out of hand so i want to talk about the concerns because then you also pointed out that no matter what these tech stack tool tech tool we will end up through though though it's got concerns we'll end up using it because these tech stack will augment us you know whether be it a consumer or a enterprise you know it will give you the these advantages so i'm sure whether it's a consumer and a business with its pros and cons i mean people will end up uh, using these technologies there's the correct uh, product market fit because yes i mean there is a, a, a use case but what what, what i mean by product market fit is, is what could be that app which could you know help it uh, go mainstream also you know so maybe talk about the the use cases in india and maybe what do you think in your head is that right product market fit which will help ar vr mr blow up uh, in a way where it reaches in the houses of the consumers as well as the enterprise india is a is a different case uh for sure i've been working with few startups in mentoring them and they are in segment of museums for example uh so i have seen uh, a great uh, use cases from india is a rich history like every state in india they have their own set of history now coming out that history and telling to kids is a, is a challenge uh we are losing out our our best of our past to could be reused or could be leveraged so that's where um, our history could be i think could be well uh well taught through through immersive technology because the the impact of the immersive technology on memory is much more than the regular uh, traditional uh, ways of of telling uh, through through the traditional uh, mode of education of course i am not saying we it all these tech can replace the the methodology it would augment them it would actually extend the exist existing methodologies uh so one is th- that segment history museums uh, our our culture aspect it it really immediately attaches to the masses of course uh, the the tourism aspect of it um and and virtual tourism and all these things where where people can't really go and they want to experience uh, the, these things if you look at the expansion of social media today um in india like for example insta or uh, facebooks it's the biggest consumer is india now how we can make that content right now if you look at ai ai is bringing all two dimensional content into 3d in a flip of seconds now i can see there there is a huge potential of bringing that content in immersive ways so this is this is mostly the adoption mass side now coming to roi side where exactly roi is lying there that's where the roi is training and onboarding for industry if you look at even even uh, the companies like maruti they have their nexa verse maruti verse mahindra has their own uh mahindra verse or, or or something uh so they are experiencing the how the technology can be trained how the the digital twins of the industry can really be experienced in these devices and and can be designed um uh, in in these devices so that's where the the right now the many indian industries are trying building their use cases um and and the other segment which is slowly growing is the web 3 um uh, the 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 metaverse kind of thing uh, maybe you may also share uh, how sumaru is doing that that great work in this right right yeah so i think yeah, exciting space i mean we we are building a social uh, media platform we building a full city of sorts where uh, every like whatever is there in a city is going to be there in the Shum- in shamaru verse you know we will have schools we'll have banks we'll have uh, theaters we'll have education space we'll have e-commerce so yes it's it's work in progress and we are very keen to i mean share it with the public and hopefully i mean maybe uh, by end of uh, the year or maybe first quarter of 2025 is something you know where we would want to kind of you know put this out uh, or, or 
we, you know, to the public to kind of, you know, test it out. And yeah, everything is on chain. We've already built this out on chain. So excited uh, uh, for that. You, you spoke about uh, AI. AI, yes, I, I think it's in the hype cycle. And, and I think Gen AI is almost... Uh, uh, like everywhere, you know, I mean, who, who would have thought that, you know, you could do like, I mean, no, no, text to images, text to 3D, text to video, text to coding and so on and so forth. So how do you think this, this uh, you know, convergence of technology, because it's it's not just uh, like AI and XR and Web3, you know, there's a convergence of sorts, you know, the AI is converging with uh, XR, XR is con converging with uh, uh, Web3 for just, just for example, what we are doing in Shemarverse is that, you know, we're using AI for, for the entire city, you know, there are traffic systems, there's AI, the NPC is a conversation AI, you know, there is like you, 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 you don't walk into an empty world, you know, you walk in, it's a multiplayer experience. So you walk into the world and there are these NPCs, which have got a conversational layer, you know, an AI conversation layer, and you can actually converse with them, you know, they can become your friends and they can take you around the space and you can watch movies along with them while the, the economical layer is uh, built on web theory. So every land parcel, every, uh, asset is on chain so how do you think enterprise can see uh, a, a way where this convergence of tech stack can uh, you, you see helping uh, enterprise so it, even in uh, uh, singapore this conference we have seen that ai and xr was a big theme how they are converging everywhere we are talking we we have seen this and even even in in thoughtworks we we tried multiple things even for example uh, let me take one example of uh, fashion trial now when we go to a, a store uh, we end up trying various clothing various type of patterns etc and and we have some sales uh, sales people now think about ai is is there we have built a use cases for one of the our customer there there is a generative ai use cases you just talk to the agent it will give you the uh, the design itself based on what you need uh, you may ask for a red flower uh, dress with the, with this and that and it will give you all the all the the dress that fit fits to you now the thing is ai is all behind the scene you're talking with voice but it looks like you're talking in a dark that's where the XR comes into picture. The XR is, to me, it looks like uh, this technology is a best interface for AI. It's a face to AI where you're talking to XR and eventually, yes, it's backed by AI and all these stuff. Um, so, so that was a, you're talking to a real person backed by intelligence, backed by all artificially intelligent virtual person. That's where I can see the XR coming in. And similar example we tried with, a, we did a research also that uh, in, a, in a hospital, uh, for example, if you are getting a treatment response in a textual form in a, in a some, some GPT bot, you would not really believe that. But if your family doctor is telling you same thing, no matter the response is generated from Gen AI or <laughs> any tool, you would end up believing it. So, so this is where the interface uh, interface to AI is helping, and that's where that's where the XR is converging with AI eventually. So you you, you spoke about concerns, and you also spoke about I mean you know you've been uh, like uh, speaking to industry, government, uh, academia. And you spoke about like a call to action to, you know, kind of, you know, prepare a plan, you know, I mean, mitigate, you know, the concerns, you know. So can can you, uh, you know, talk a little bit more about that? What are the, the concerns that you see of uh, AR, VR, MR? And how do you think that, uh, you know, we can create a future where we mitigate these concerns? Uh, metaverse technology or or we, we it is all about the changing the belief. The, the reality between reality of reality would actually go away. The blur, physical and virtual will blur together in such a way that we will stop making the differences. Now, what is the side effect of it? Now, you can have n number of identities in that world. 
i may want to be at particular identity in some of in front of friends we do have those identities in front at home at friends and uh, but but think about uh, people having different identities and we have seen already in social media how people can get into the uh, get into hack their account and uh, damage the identity on social media and it really impact the brain heavily um, by the time we come to know come to know that the by the time we prove that yeah i i i am not at that place it might be someone else and things like that by the time we prove that the social media damage is already happened right now if you look at the laws and the ecosystem um uh, there is no definite laws about it right um rules and regulations are not yet there the standards are not yet defined how really control the identity how to validate the identity am i talking to ad uh, in the real or it's a virtual avatar the virtual avatar is really linked to ad who is responsible for that so that's where the 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 rules and regulation need to come up how to safeguard our own identity protect our uh, our all the privacy matters we are talking about virtual uh, virtual properties uh, buying land in a virtual uh, ecosystem virtual ass assets owning the virtual assets now uh, if someone trespass those ass assets it's really uh, it's really a mental mental problem people it really cause mental harassment to people um, other aspect is why these technologies are mind changing there is a research by forbes telling that these are virtual drugs they are talking about we are taking a virtual drugs the reason is the way we are meeting like the way we meet friends our dopamine level our our whole thing the 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 brain chemicals oxytocin dopamine they increases and that gives such feeling of connection feeling of happiness now people have realized you will get same feeling in virtual environment too when you get to meet people avatar you will get same feeling after some time you forget that you are in a virtual avatar virtual environment so this is how it would impact the brain it is actually taking like a drug there are painless therapies are being happening you would not even experience the pain uh while doctors operating your in your body if you are using a virtual environment and just playing in in a himalayas and doctors operating in, on your body these are the experiments already have done so there must be rules and regulations defined so how those defines government alone cannot define those academia need to come up with the research academia need to come up academia need won't have that industrial experience the industry need to come together so that's where that's where whole ecosystem need to come together and people just like we creating social content on facebook or instagram or any other twitter we are responsible for what content we are generating same way metaverse adoption we will be responsible people need to also participating on those policies how those really made and in that same ecosystem uh, i've been talking to um, academia also uh, for example with iit madras we are working with the uh, with the metaverse uh, india uh, mips metaverse india policies and standards uh, where uh, lawyers from supreme court also joined that committee there are entities from government also participating um, uh, so so this is how this is how it is um, it is going but that's i think there is a lot more effort needed from all parties then only the real adoption will happen otherwise we will adopt it without knowing that yes where we are in exactly yes i think we need to be cognizant that this technology is so potent and we need to take careful steps and uh, all uh in a concerted and collaborative uh, together you know because like you rightfully pointed out you know even a, a current social media which is a 2d which restricts you to just your 2d uh, uh interface you know when you talking about these ar vr mr technologies you are you will be immersed in the space and and it'll be able to capture all those 
senses and you know the biometric data you know wherever you're looking all of those data can be captured and then they can be leveraged i, I, I always i mean you know think of um, uh, black mirror as like shows like a very dystopian picture of what the world could look like if we don't build technology which is for the common good and only for like you know i mean uh, centralized technology so i hope that you know there is more conversations and more standards and more policies and more people are involved to you know make sure that the way this technology progresses or accelerates it's it goes towards a space where it's for the the larger good now did this technology stack you know even right now you spoke about uh, you, you know taking pain away you know in fact my, my last con uh, conversation was with with, with uh, dr rohan jo joswani and, and uh, it, it's actually about that you know how virtual reality can trick your motor cortex into kind of maybe taking you away from your physical world and you know there are these surgeons who have actually done maybe surgeries or other uh, therapies where you know people don't actually feel pain you know because they get into the world and they 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 actually disconnect from the physical world they they go into the virtual world that they they are they don't feel pain you know so so it's so magical and i guess i obviously there's more research which needs to be done to kind of completely understand the potential of this and how it can be future uh, i mean leveraged for you know uh, better healthcare but what according to you are the the future use cases of ar vr mr you know what what would what do you think uh, these technologies are, are going to look like maybe by around 2034 2035 how do you think ar vr mr is going to uh, impact uh, a society uh, looking at all these uh, development happening and the speed of the development like when exactly what will happen is is a still a, still a thing but i think eventually um, we'll be able to teleport full body easily we will be communicating uh, irrespective of location irrespective of uh, our culture irrespective of our uh, uh, reason uh, country so we'll be able to communicate the world more uh, in a more better way in a more understandable way the boundaries of the world will will go away with with these that's how i see a, a future will be able to communicate no matter what language people are talking and in in their environment in my environment bringing them in my environment i am going there i going there so that's one thing i i see the collaboration would would be uh, improving other thing is uh, which is fascinating for me is how the whole spatial environment spatial memory it digitally created just like right now we are talking about when we go to uh, some places we create videos and that becomes our memory we create albums and all those thing but with immersive technologies i am thinking much more than i am expecting much more from this technology like uh, it's like a snapshot of the memory i put that snapshot because i can't search that huge enough brain for all the thing but i'll be able to have snapshots of memory place it somewhere whenever i need to search in that memory i'll go and plug in somehow and then i will have that spatial memory of of the whole thing just like uh, in harry potter movie there uh, there was a device called pensive device something where where we keep the memory backup because you can't search a thousand year old memory so you attach that backup and then so i i have that feeling that we will reach there um, other thing is uh, which i have been reading about is the programmable dreams programmable thoughts um, i think we are not too far from that stage and uh, it looks scary but eventually it is going to happen we'll be able to uh, control what we want to think what others want to think about us and that's where i said it's really scary but i am i am having sensing that we are going there some some way right yeah, yeah so so it's it's kuldeep it's so very exciting and also scary and i think we humans need to be cognizant that 
here we are we've got a such a potential technology it will break boundaries you, you you mentioned about you know teleportation i mean you know right now like i mean you're sitting in delhi i'm sitting in goa but how wonderful it would be that you know i mean you know we have these head wearable devices and and you are sitting right possibly in my room with with a holographic uh, uh, uh you know image and, and maybe the same holographic mind is, is in your room and then we uh, possibly with uh, haptic feedback you will be able to actually not just maybe uh, talk but obviously maybe also approach touch uh, each other if 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 not touch it <laughs> like maybe you know pick up things and uh, yeah yeah, yeah right, feel, right, feel, right. feel the feel the touch uh, and, and and spatial memory i think so far or uh, or uh, uh, the human race has been stuck to the 2d interface you know everything whether it's a photograph whether it's a, a tv screen a theater a, a mobile or, or a computer it's all stuck to like a, a like a like a 2d screen while we live in a 3d world and then how fantastic it would be to kind of you know have like a backup of a certain situation like a spatial uh, backup and, and then go back to it like i mean i mean i would love to relive my marriage you know i mean that was like 13 years ago you know or, or maybe the first time i i, I went out for a date with my wife you know i mean that would be so exciting to go back and say okay oh that was 13 years back and and that was so so very cool so i think we've got and, and programmable dreams yes i think that's that gets into like a a, a great use case as, as well as scary use case because there i'm assuming that we will be possibly uh, con uh maybe converging with brain computer interface where we will be able to possibly read up the entire cognitive structure of uh, a, a human being and then kind of tinker around and program a, a, a certain uh, space where like there was this movie called total recall or there are other movies you know where you take go into a virtual world you know and there's a lot of in, in the black mirror also you know there are a lot of cases where you, they put you in the, these virtual dreams you know i mean yes i mean that sounds exciting that sounds scary also because what if you could you know put somebody in, in a loop a dream <laughs> which is a, a loop and and what if that space itself is so real because the virtual i i think is going uh, virtual reality the term itself uh, i i think the end goal of this technology is very profound it is to emulate reality to copy reality and i think you know the 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 consumers and enterprise and and the, and the 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 ones who are don't believe in this technology needs to understand that the end goal of this technology is to emulate reality what would happen if we actually do that where we create a virtual world but and we put you into the virtual world but you think that the world is uh, that uh, that that physical i mean you know because it would have all those physical properties you know and oh. i think that's that's the that's the scary part and i think that's that's what we need to be cognizant about you know because there, there are so many there's people like donald hoffman then there is david chalmers who have already written books like david chalmers has written a book donald hoffman uh, says the entire space time is basically nothing but a virtual reality uh, headset you know and, and and this is physics this is not uh, uh you know anything which is woo woo so yes i think we are going into the space where we need to be cognizant that virtual reality a technology is so very potent that eventually when it kind of like really evolves the things that it could do it would be really really awesome my last question to you there are a lot of people i mean youngsters and enterprise also youngsters who would want to know like where to start from if they want to get into this technology and enterprise who would want to know where to start from if they want to start building and, and creating thing what would be the advice to both then the uh, the youngsters who want to start tinkering around developing ar vr mr and, and the enterprise who want to use this uh, tech stack to you know uh, for for the businesses easiest way to start in my opinion is still unity based development there are uh, because it it build a cross platform it doesn't limit you to the particular device uh, otherwise people can follow their uh, what device they have every device comes up with their own software development kit uh, development guidelines um, there is no shortcut to shortcut to learning they of course need to learn go through the path there are number of courses available um, and treat the xr as a tool not really a solution in itself that's a that's a one thing they need to remember we were able to like in last 5 year i have trained around 1000 plus people in my organization on these technologies uh, 
and they were all they never had earlier experience of xr as such so we trained them created courses internally um uh, and uh, they were all different background like javascript c++ java, uh, java background or dot net uh, but all can easily adapt to these new technology the 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 different concept is uh, the physics engine concept our all maths aspect our physics aspect uh statistics uh, on converging transforming one coordinate system to other coordinate system all these are uh, may may take some learning path but people coming from engineering background maths background they can easily grasp all these uh, all these concepts uh, so capability wise i don't think a bigger problem uh, the bigger thing is uh, creative mindset going beyond these 2d screen because we are a legacy of 30 40 years of using 2d screen and we think the world is 2d the digital world is 2d but it's not actually so they takes a lot of time for all the people like business analyst designers all all those need really time to think uh to come out of 2d and think in 3d it takes time lot of uh design language are different uh design systems for 3d is very different um and how really interaction happen is very different so that's where the learning path is technology wise it's still a small path but other pieces are uh, takes time and it only comes with experience it can't really be uh, taken from a video or uh, or someone can give us uh, training it unless people experience it then they will automatically start building right yeah kuldeep thank you for taking time and being part of the podcast wish you the very best and uh, to my listeners you know i'm going to share the link for the book exploring the metaverse redefining reality in the digital age the ones who have not got it i i strongly uh, uh, this thing recommend taking this book because this will be your first step into understanding what metaverse is you know what are the challenges and what are the opportunities whether you are a consumer whether you are an in- enterprise i think it's a great starting point for you to understand about metaverse and you know build a a, a preferred future so kuldeep thank you once again for taking time and being part of the podcast and my listeners if you like what you see in here then please press the subscribe button and until next time see you guys bye bye thank you thank you really appreciate thank this you.